This is everything you're going to need to build the easiest stone farm for Minecraft Bedrock 1.19. The easiest way to build this is from the ground up, so that's exactly what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is place down five blocks in a line, just like this, and then we're going to come across and we are going to leave a two block gap, and then we're going to make another line of blocks. We're going to grab a chest now, and we're going to place down a double chest right here, then we're going to grab our hoppers and we're going to line up four hoppers going directly into that chest just like so. So this is what it should look like. It's really simple. And then we're going to grab our pistons and we are going to place down four pistons looking towards the hoppers. So the piston faces pointing in this direction. We're going to grab some more blocks now and we're going to place down two blocks right here. And then we're going to just double up this wall like so. We're going to grab our obsidian now, and then we're going to place down four obsidian on this block right here. And the reason why we're placing down this obsidian is that way these pistons only push across stone that's made, and it doesn't make like 12 long strands of stone that go all the way across here. So this obsidian stops the stone, so it's all in a nice line for you. We're going to come to the backside of the pistons, and then we're going to set down eight blocks in a wall just like this. What this is going to do is it's going to keep the water contained from these pistons because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to go ahead and waterlog each and every one of these pistons. Now the simplest thing to do is just make a water source or just dig out a 2x2 two two and then go ahead and make an infinite water source and then you can place down these four buckets. That way you only need one bucket and one bucket is better than four. After you've waterlogged your pistons, we're going to place down a third layer of blocks on the majority of the farm. So place down blocks on all of the previously placed blocks and then place down four blocks over top of these hoppers. But make sure to leave a hole here because this is going to be where we're mining. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our lava bucket and we're going to come up here and all you need is one lava bucket and place down anywhere and then it's going to create stone and it'll spread. Make sure you don't fall in here though because that would be very bad. But as you can see we've got stone here so all we need now is some redstone to actually push the pistons so then we can go ahead and mine the stone. Also really quick the reason why the chest is here and there are four hoppers because you actually can't touch that back block right there so you'll never break that stone brick but you'll break the stone that's right in front of it. All right now we need a clock to work the entire thing so I actually lied we're going to go ahead and break these four blocks right here and then we're going to place down a block right here so you should have nine blocks and it should look like this. And an easy way to make sure that you've got this right is you have to place down a V shape of blocks just like so. And obviously if you place down this block, then you should have a long line right here, which would be one, two, three, four, five, and six blocks long. Then we're going to go ahead and place down a lever on this block. And we're going to place down a redstone dust right here. We're going to place down a redstone torch on this block so that it's powering the block above it. And then we're going to grab a redstone repeater and we're going to point it back at this block. Now you can tell if you've done the clock right, because if you have, then it should be repeating like this. And if you've done it wrong, then, well, there should be no redstone signal. But this is our on-off switch. As you can see, when you press the lever, it goes ahead and stops the clock. We're going to grab our redstone dust now, and we're going to place down six redstone dust on top of these blocks. So now if we come over here and turn on the clock, you can see that our stone pushed across. And if we actually go ahead and break it, we are going to get more stone flooding in. So that way we can break a ton of stone super quickly. Really quickly before I show you how to use the farm, if you wanted to go ahead and throw a roof on top of this, that would probably be a good idea just in case maybe you get an elytra eventually and you fly into the lava. Now that would obviously be bad. So adding a roof on here protects you from the lava. It does make it a little taller though, but at the same time, it does look a little cooler. You could obviously decorate this because the only thing that matters is if you have access to this lever, this stone block, and these chests. So for other than that, you can make this look like whatever you want. You could throw it in a house, you can do whatever. There are tons of great ideas. I've gone ahead and thrown myself into survival mode just to show you guys how to use the farm. And as you can see, I have two pickaxes in my inventory. I've got a normal pickaxe, and one that's enchanted with Silk Touch. Now, if you want to use this farm and collect yourself some stone, then go ahead and get yourself a Silk Touch pickaxe. If you want cobblestone, then go ahead and get yourself a normal pickaxe. 
It really is up to you, whichever you want. I'm assuming most of you guys are going to want stone, so make sure you have yourself a silk touch pickaxe. And one thing before we start the farm, I forgot to mention that this repeater right here should actually be on two ticks. So that is very important. If it's on one tick like this, then the farm is going to produce very little stone and it's going to be very inefficient. So make sure that you have it on two ticks. Other than that, though, we are going to go ahead and turn this lever on. And when it goes on, you're going to see that this redstone dust flashes. And when it's flashing, that means that this farm is on. So we're going to come stand as close to this chest as possible. And we're going to go ahead and hold the break block button. So obviously, I am using a silk touch pickaxe so we are going to get stone from this as you can see we are getting stone relatively consistently in a bunch of different areas but if i wanted to switch over and get some cobblestone then i would go ahead and use my normal pickaxe and the better the pickaxe the faster this farm is going to be honestly with netherite this is more than enough but if you guys have iron pickaxes try and get some diamond pickaxes going as soon as possible but this farm is super efficient it's going to get you tons of cobblestone and stone depending on again which enchantment you have if we go ahead and take a look at this chest while wow, that sheep was close you can see that we've got quite a bit of stone and quite a bit of cobblestone so overall this farm is a huge success it's going to give you all of your stone needs no more strip mining all you have to do is hold the break block button so hope you guys found this farm useful with that though that is going to be the end of this tutorial it is quite a pretty farm i must say but again you guys could build a little structure around it hopefully you guys did enjoy this one if you did then please do consider smashing that subscribe button and leaving a like my name is one of mc and i will catch you guys in the next one